Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. This time we're going to be slicing up this big elm log on my bandsaw mill that I built right here in my driveway a few years ago. So if you missed the video where I went out and picked up this log, I'll leave you a link to that up in the cards and down in the description. This was picked up out of a side yard. It was kind of a weird and awkward kind of pickup, but it went relatively smoothly. Got this thing back here, got it on the mill, and it is uh, pretty much ready to go. Well, kind of. I have a little bit of prep work to do on the log as well as kind of get set up and get ready to be sawing here. So before we jump into it, let's walk around the log a little bit, see where we're kind of getting ourselves into, see what needs to happen before we get sawing, and uh, just talk about the overall log itself. So first off, overall size on this thing, the diameter down here across is 45 inches right through into this kind of bulbous area here. And we're looking at about 38 inches here in the other direction. So kind of an oblong uh, oval type of log. Overall length is right at 10 feet, but there is this big chainsaw cut right here that we're gonna have to address. So just like a lot of the logs that I get, this one was destined for firewood as well. So there is this chainsaw cut here, which goes pretty much all the way through here. And there is just a tiny little bit of material on the other side still holding it on but you know only like that much a little strap in there holding it on there so that's not uh, gonna work out so well so that one's probably gonna get cut off or well it is I already decided that now on the other side we have a similar type situation where there is a partial chainsaw cut here this is further down the log than the other one is there's that one but at this orientation that cut would be removed after maybe the second slab or so. So that could be left there and we can keep cutting all the way through. Or it could be removed and this could be sawn as something separately. That's a nice little crotch area there which would be pretty cool to see sawn as well. So if we take a look at the butt end of the log, we can see this uh, kind of fissure type thing going all the way through here and it goes all the way down through there as well. So that is a bark inclusion that runs the entire width of the log vertically there. So that is separating this thing into two halves. So cutting it like this, you would have a bark inclusion between two full slabs on either side. So you have nested slabs or two very easily separable slabs that we use for you know, two different tables or two different projects or what have you. So with that in mind, the fact that this is going to be two halves, uh, leaving this attached wouldn't be all that bad either because on this side you'd have a slightly longer slab than on this side. And if they're used separately as individual pieces, then you just have two different length boards you could use, or they could always be joined back together to make one big slab for a tabletop, for instance. So thinking about the orientation, this thing is laying in right now. This is the way I'm going to cut it, but it could be sawn nine degrees from here, and it would expose all the crotch figure here, as well as the crotch figure on that side. Since that side is pretty much all cut away anyway, there's not a whole lot of purpose in me doing that, at least in my opinion. I think cutting it this way will expose a little more interesting things since we have this kind of burl thing for, you know, kind of forming there. We have that bark inclusion which should have a lot of figure around it as well. Now the other thing with this decision is the fact that these things splay out so far from each other. So that would be a big void if this was sawn all the way through, which uh, could still be cool for something, but that's something to keep in mind as well. If this was still sawn like this, you would have this big hole here between the two halves of the slab. So, you know, some more things to kind of think about. So as far as I can tell, this is an American elm, as far as my kind of research kind of showed me. Um, the American elm has this kind of goofy base to it where like one side is offset like that, or at least that's the way I've seen it. So if anyone knows for sure what kind of elm tree this is, feel free to let me know, but there is the leaf. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just finish up this cut, separate this chunk of the tree from uh, the rest of it there. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that the trunk there is supporting this side of the log. So if I were just to cut that off, this would probably roll and uh, probably wouldn't fall off the bed, but it's going to go in the wrong direction because I don't have a whole lot of space. There's not a whole lot of room here to get that saw head past there without this thing shifting all the way over, which uh, we could do, but I prefer not to have to worry about that <laughs> at all. Now I do want it to roll a little bit. I want to even out the crotches a hair, so I've put a board underneath it there to catch it a little bit as it starts to fall, and uh, that should allow it to rotate a little bit, but not to rotate so much that it comes too far off the side of the saw. So 
so because I can't really stand back here behind there, mostly because this log is going to roll and I don't really want to be inside of a log while it's rolling. So I have to be standing out here, which means this thing's going to roll towards me, which uh, is terrifying enough. So I have this wedge here, which is going to keep it from pinching clothes in the front and kind of jamming up my saw as I try and get out of the way as it starts to move. So hopefully that'll work out okay. I have a small amount of material left back here. That's the only thing holding it on is from here down to right about here. So this is a little strap here that I have to cut. And uh, yeah, I can't get it from in here. I have to be on top of this log. I don't want to be staying on top of the log while it starts rolling with a chainsaw. <laughs> so this is the, uh, the more safer spot in theory. <laughs> oh boy! So now this is off of here, I can show you what was still connected. So basically, just right through back here, which is where they couldn't reach with their chainsaw, it wasn't quite long enough. So just right there. So that would have been a lot of uh, slabs with a big old cut in it. But looking at it now, I'm going to leave that for sure because it actually doesn't extend that far past there. And it's just have some cool burls and stuff. So I think we're good now. This is how it's going to be. <laughs> All right, let's get a blade on this thing. That would probably be somewhat helpful. So now as the saw head is going up, one last little thing that I forgot to, uh, to show. I've got some, uh, some screws and stuff hanging out over here. So I'll probably pull those out at some point. There's a few of them in there. There's a big one right there with a washer. So there should be some good stuff inside this log. I should probably take off this chain too. That would be pretty fun to try and cut through. Yeah, I think I'm ready to make that first cut. The log should clear the carriage, so that's good. And uh, the current saw height is at 37 inches off the bed, so not super high, which is uh, kind of nice. So I think with this, it's got all these burls on it. I might cut this a few more times later and we'll see what's inside of there. Yeah, that works. It's uh, out of the way and it's kind of in the right area for when it's time to saw it again. Ooh. Some good stuff in here. I get the feeling this is gonna be heavy. I can't even move this. <laughs> oh good, it got lighter. So there is the start of that bark inclusion so you can see how it's been growing around itself for all these years. This is what we'll expect all the way through the entire log. Two separate halves of a, of a larger slab. Hey, this is nice and light. Take a look at what's going on up here. I got that bark inclusion right there. And uh, you know, there's some fun, interesting bits of grain here. So this first cut's kind of small. So what I really want to do is be down more into this flat area to get more width off these cuts. So I think for the first couple of cuts, I'm just gonna make a couple pieces that are probably six quarters, so inch and a half thick. That's also gonna get me through all this chainsaw cut here so that we can make uh, continuous length cuts that are a lot wider than this currently is.
Why does all the exciting stuff happen when the camera's off? So the only thing holding this tree together was uh, just those first couple of cuts. So as I was walking around, getting ready to bring the saw head back, I heard something creaking, and that bark conclusion was starting to open up. I'm like, oh, okay, it's releasing some stress. And it just goes, boof. <laughs> so we got some uh, little short six quarter boards off of here, so that's a, that's a start. Uh, the nice thing about this is that since I have a flat cut on here already, it's, uh, I can keep these things nested together still throughout the cuts. All I have to do now is just roll them over so that the flat cut is now down the bed. So that keeps the orientation the same between all the cuts, which is kind of nice. So this just became a much bigger uh, adventure than it was before. So I feel like I should yell something like, are you not entertained right now? <laughs> so this took uh, right at two hours to get rolled over and repositioned. Not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's a lot of back and forth, but uh, that's how it goes. It is now six o'clock. I'm going to go and have dinner and we'll get back to cutting this up some other day. <laughs> All right, it is uh, the next day. Get some time here this afternoon to get back out here and keep working on this log here. Now one thing I can't forget to do is pull these uh, screws and things out of here. I'll probably do that after a few cuts here so there's less crap in the way. So it's pretty incredible this tree is actually still standing because it actually wasn't really connected by much at all. So it's all, it's pretty much all soil. <laughs> in there holding it all together. So that's uh, pretty incredible. This tree was still standing. Now I had figured that these were gonna come apart into two different slabs. I just didn't think that they would uh, come apart while the log was still sitting there on the saw, but I guess it's just how the, the weight of the log was laying there, so it just kind of opened up on itself. But uh, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> it makes for a more interesting story. Yeah, this is all soil. There's a little, like a root or something here? I don't know. We're going to cut it. Let's get the saw positioned. I'm going to try and uh, kind of come in, I don't know, maybe down in here somewhere and see where that kind of ends up. Get rid, of, get rid of a lot of the waste stuff that's going to be up here. There's not a whole lot of width. Now, the nice thing about uh, the fact this thing is rolled over onto a flat is that I can now use lumber scale 
throw myself down to the bed since now I'm referencing off the bed and not the previous cut like I normally am. The other thing that's nice about this too is that there's a flat side on the bottom there so these things are totally stable. I don't have to worry about them moving around on me as I'm cutting like I normally would if I was just cutting with the cursed side of the log touching the bed. So really, in this case, I could remove slabs as I go. I don't have to keep the slabs in place in order to keep weight on the log to keep it from moving around. So I am temporarily going to stack these over here because uh, I've sold to like a quarter of my entire inventory the last couple of months, which left me with a few of these stacks that are partial. So this log and that log back there has already sold through over half of the slabs. So I have to consolidate some of these stacks and then one of these bases will become the base for this guy. But for now, temporarily, they will go right here. Oh, that's nice. I like the color on this stuff. It's got a nice light brown heartwood. So since we're on the outside log still, not a whole lot of crazy things going on, but it does give us a nice preview of what we're gonna get into the actual log. Let's get these uh, screws out of here. Drywall screw. No, that's not good. So this one is stripped out or it broke. Can't tell. <laughs> okay. Ooh, good one. So there we go. We got the few large screws and a little tiny drywall screw in there so uh, yeah they're out now let's keep on cutting see what happens
All right, we hit something towards the end of this cut. So let's uh, start digging and see what we got. Maybe I missed a screw or something. So we got something that's a good size. On the blade, we're missing a significant amount of teeth, especially right here. There's no tooth from this point all the way to here, so that's about a foot missing teeth there. This is pretty good. So I went through it pretty quickly, which is always good. Fewer teeth destroyed if you go through the inclusion at normal speed instead of trying to slow down because you know there's going to be metal there. All right, there's a couple of them in this one. These were deep in here, fully embedded. What is this? Whatever that was, it got mangled. <laughs> so there is whatever this was. Not exactly sure. And this thing's kind of goofy. It's all like little pieces. Take your guess on that one. I don't really know. Eh, something that was fairly mangled by the saw blade. Whatever it is. Pretty big though. All right, let's get these slabs out of here and take a look at them. Splish splash, here we go. Whee! We got a little rot pocket going on up there. One thing I like about Elm is just the color. It's really beautiful. It's not super dark, not super light. It's got a nice kind of hue to it. It's cool. This is a, uh... yeah, guess it's kind of gross. <laughs> Let's get the next one. All right, let's get an idea of how wide we're at here. Down here, about 40 inches. I think up here, we're gonna be like a 48-ish or so. 48, 50 inches. And then for length, I think we're pretty close to eight feet. Seven foot seven, so good sized piece of wood. Things are looking pretty interesting and stuff. I like the, uh, the straight green kind of clean lines look here, but we have again, the distressed area in the middle. And as we get further in, we should start seeing some kind of swirling green things going on around this bark inclusion as the wood gets a little bit weird around uh, that area. Also, apparently, there was something on this half as well that uh, we cut through. And then there's the other two on this side, which we had previously seen. All right, let's get this uh, blade off of here, get a fresh one on there, and get back to making some sawdust.
So I think it's uh, becoming pretty evident why this tree was kind of declining. This is all ant tracks, so it's probably had a good amount of rot, as you can see through here, and some ant colonies living in here, so it's probably what ended up happening. It's just got uh, so rotten and so gross that it started to die. Pretty nice, clean looking grain though. So you can see all these ant tracks, ant colony lines all through here. So it's had some critters living in it, hollowing it out from the inside. Both limbs it looks like too, so that was probably what, uh, what did it. Seeing a little bit of the kind of elm eyes in here. That's sort of like a kind of bro figure. <laughs> Oh, I guess we did hit some more stuff. I didn't notice. <laughs> a few more uh, nails or something in here. One, two. Let's take a look at this one. Oh, found our friends, the ants. Getting some pretty straight green stuff now. It's probably getting close to quarter sawn. At least out here is quarter sawn, so that's nice and straight. That big old hole in there. There's our friends, the ants. We'll take care of them in a second. We're starting to get some crotch figure on top of this uh, limb here. Since we're sawing this, instead of sawing it this way, we're sawing it straight through. That's going to remove a lot of the crotch figures, but it's going to give us figure on top of the crotch area, which we'll see more of this coming through. Over here, Starting into those burl areas. So we got those there, which is uh, pretty darn cool. Since it's been kind of cold out, these ants have been uh, kind of dormant or getting ready to go dormant. So they got some kind of rude awakening for me today. So we're gonna take care of these guys with some household ant killer. And this is going to work out pretty well because I have to go in for the day. I can leave this exposed like this. I can check on it again tomorrow. But before I do head in, I'll head over to the slabs on the saw sill and see if there's any ants over there as well, which there probably are. Oh, oh yeah, there are. So we'll just spray these guys and then what's nice is I can come and check on it again tomorrow when I wake up. There's a lot of them in there. Night, night ants. I'll see you tomorrow. So it's a little colder now. We are now into uh, heavy frost season. So everything is now frozen. So these guys are uh, totally frozen. <laughs> so normally that insecticide does a pretty good job of killing all the ants in these things. And then I just come back with the compressed air and blow out all the caverns. Since it's uh, below freezing now, and any ants that are still in here are gonna be dormant, let's keep an eye on these slabs as we get into the spring, if I start seeing uh, ants crawling around, then I know they're still in there. I think it's pretty safe to say that this tree had some serious uh, insect decay, which is probably why it was uh, dying. <laughs> okay. We're getting to that time of year where the sawdust just freezes to the surface. So, gotta start using hot water again. <laughs> and you can see the extent of all of those ants and how much damage they caused in this tree right through here, which makes a pretty interesting look now, but there's also some cool little figuring here on top of this crotch here. So this is what you're gonna get if we're gonna be like perpendicular to the crotch, not parallel. So with this cut orientation, we're parallel to this main crotch right here but we're perpendicular to the two crotches that were up top there. So we're gonna start seeing some of this type of figure here, as opposed to those long feathers, which you would see if you were saw parallel to the crotch. Down here, all quarter sawn. Really nice color, really nice straight grain. <laughs> Here's a look at some of that top side crotch figure. We're gonna have the bullseye type effect with the feather going 
in this direction as opposed to in that direction. So it looks like we have what, three more cuts to make to separate what's on the mill into the four remaining slabs, or I guess since these are separate, the eight remaining slabs. So time to get back to sawing for a little while. Right, we're gonna pause here and take a look at a couple of slabs. I heard something happen over here, so I probably cut through a nail or halfway through that cut. And I gotta move my side stops anyway, so let's uh, move some slabs and see what we got. Let's see what's going on here. That's nice. It is really nice, especially with that ant damage in there. Again, we got some really nice straight grain, bleh, straight grain clear stuff down here on both sides. And we get into the ant damage up here, which is a really cool look. And we're getting up with some figure from the crotch on this side. Here's that partial chainsaw cut. Just looking really nice. Let's grab the next one. Splish splash. There we go. Oh, that's beautiful. I think this one might be my favorite one. I like this pair a lot because you have some really nice, like pretty much all 100% clear grain through most of the slabs. But then you have a really interesting cavity here in the middle. Yeah, I think that's my favorite. Best shape by far. <laughs> And walking back over here, where's that nail? There's a little nail right there, which uh, went through. Blade seems to be cutting just fine though, after that, so I don't keep going. This blade's already cut through, I think that makes it three nails now. It seems to be cutting okay. It's a little slow, so it's probably dull, but it's not really waving around or not cutting flat, so I'm just gonna keep on going. Okay, so through my own lack of observation skills, I did not notice that there was a 2x4 under this guy. <laughs> so, that's uh, going to have thrown things off quite a bit. But, uh, I don't know, it doesn't seem noticeable. Because in theory, all of these cuts aren't perfectly like next to each other. But I don't think you can really tell that you know, this end here is higher up in the log than there. It seems to kind of flow over just fine. Even these separations are still fine. So I don't think it's going to matter a whole lot other than that last slab on the right side here is going to be tapered and pretty much firewood. I think this is going to be pretty similar to the last one that I liked. Same kind of thing. It's some pretty clear stuff. This has a little more cathedral grain since we're getting away from the quarter sawn area. So this has a little more uh, grain going on here, but we still have pretty clear material with a uh, pretty cool little hole thing in the middle and whatever's going on here. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> this is too much fun. <laughs> oh, this is cool. Uh, I'm really liking this. Now we're getting some more of the sapwood. So we have this really cool, kind of like half sapwood, half heartwood kind of look. It's all kind of swirling together there with some nice reds in there as well. And over here we got some kind of straight grain stuff. Surprise, surprise. (laughs) 
All right, now for this guy. <laughs> I cannot believe I missed that. Okay, so this is, I'll figure out what I'm gonna do with this. Because it is not a consistent thickness, it's not gonna dry very well. It's gonna dry very unevenly. So I have one end that's about two and a half inches thick. And I have the other end that's about one inch thick. But luckily this is towards the outside of the log, so it's not all that uh, important anyway. It's getting towards the narrower spots. So if this happened and I was making those cuts in the middle of the log, where there's a higher value, that'd be a little more of an issue. This isn't too much of a problem though. Since this log already produced a few, uh, or several kind of short boards and odd boards, I have those to deal with too. So what I could do here is cut this into shorter sections and then it wouldn't be too much of an issue. So this right here, that's enough for a guitar body. Since everyone's been asking me about guitar bodies, so I can cut this guy right here. This would become a guitar body. And then this area down here could just be uh, sawn again or cut to smaller pieces or whatever for uh, smaller projects. It's not a complete loss, but now this slab is gonna be separate from that one over there, which isn't a big problem either because there's so many little pieces that I already got off this log. And also looking at this guy, I mean, it's cut almost all the way through here, so this could be some more, I don't know, shorts and things. It's like I have, I've got those slabs over there, there's four of them there, and I have these short pieces and the small narrow pieces there as well. So I have a lot of little stuff to do with, with this log already, as well as these little offcuts if I want to keep cutting these as well. So I think this is just going to go in a separate pile with all the smaller stuff. So another nice stack of slabs. I'm really happy that this worked out this way with the uh, two kind of separate nested slabs because I am almost out of that style of slab. So this will kind of restock the nested slab inventory. I have uh, a few more slabs. I got to come out of here still and then I'll get these things stacked, but I'm not in a, a huge rush to be out here freezing and stacking wood, but uh, I'll get around to it eventually. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed this one. It's always a nice change of pace when things don't work out perfectly. It makes things a little more interesting. And uh, that's what I'm in it for, the, the interest in the adventure. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the sawmill, anything back in the shop, anything out here, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.